Hello. In today's quick growth uh, video from Tab Quadrant, we'll look into how to customize taxonomies in Tab Red Edge. I'm going to switch to Tab Red Edge now and uh, take a look at the lo locations taxonomy which I created in one of the previous videos. Here you see some uh, a continent such as Europe, uh, a country such as United States, some, some, some states and some cities. Taxonomies in Tab Red Edge are based on SCAS, which is stands for Simple Knowledge Organization System. It's a standard from W3C, and this standard defines a general class of concepts. So everything I have created so far is a concept, and it also defines a number of different fields or properties that I can use to capture information about a concept. Right now, I'm just using a preferred label and a relationship to the broader parent, but I could click here on also show properties that have no values, and you could see all the pre-built fields and the richness that is available to me. So I could define alternative labels, uh, notations, I could build genetic relationships using related concept, I could do nodes, and so on. So all of this is good, uh, but I want to capture something pretty specific for my taxonomy. Uh, namely, I want to capture population for each of those um, concepts. And I also want to differentiate between them because some are cities and some are states. I also want to uh, say that states and countries can have capitals and the capitals are cities. All of this I can accomplish by building my own ontology that extends cost. To do this, I will create a new ontology. And I'm going to call it Locations Ontology to correspond to my taxonomy. Since I am extending SCAS, the very first step that I want to take is to include SCAS into this ontology. And then I will go about customizing and extending it. So here are SCAS shackle shapes. I'm going to use just SCAS, not SCAS Excel, which is an extension of SCAS for handling labels as resources. So with this, I'll switch to my ontology. And you see that I already have a number of classes. These are the classes that defined in SCAS. And each of them have a number of properties. So you see all these properties that we see for the we've seen for the concept for the concepts in our existing taxonomy. I want to create a new property to store population, and I can define it directly for all concepts because uh, everything I'm doing here is storing locations, and uh, from my perspective, all locations could have population. But it's better to create a specific class for my type of concepts because taxonomies can be modular, can they can come together, and as a result of them coming together, the models, ontologies that they're using also coming together, and I may end up in a situation where I have a taxonomy with concepts that I don't want to have population uh, filled. With that, I'm going to create a new class as a subclass of concept, and I'm going to call it location concept. And you see the classes that I am creating here in my ontology, the icons are bolder, the imported classes, the icons are fainter, and that tells me uh, that they are imported. Also, when I click on one, I see that it is actually defined someplace else, not in this location uh, ontology. So the location concept inherits all the properties of the concept, and I am going to um, add another property. 
Uh, before I do that, let me create a special section for it. It's called a property group. So I'm going to create a property group to put my population field in. I'm going to call it um, geo geopolitical characteristics. Is that in, is that in place? I'm going to add to it a new property. This is going to be a property that stores population and integer value. Therefore, it's an attribute, not a relationship. And I'm going to call it population. Population, and I am going to say that it will need to be an integer. I'm going to make it optional, and I'm not going to limit a number of values. And this is it. I've just created a new property, put it in the geopolitical characteristic group. I want to move this group higher up so it appears directly after associative relationships and before nodes. So I could do that by dragging and dropping it, or I could do that by changing its order. So you see that the nodes has order four and associative relationships has order three. So I'm going to give it order three. Changes. All right, I'm done with my population. Now I want to create a property for capitals. And um, I want to create subclasses of the location concept. So I will create continent country city and state All right. So with this, I want to say that countries can have capitals, and um, those capitals are cities. I will create yet another new property. In this case, uh, now I'm going to create relationship. I'm going to put it also in the geopolitical characteristics uh, group, and I'm going to create a new relationship. I'm going to call it capital. And I'm going to say that the country could have only one capital. And the values of capitals must be cities. I'm going to select the type of values, class of values, city. And I could do the same for state. I could also say that states can have uh, capitals by clicking on the state and saying that create a relationship for states as well. It's going to end up being the same relationship. It's also a city. Now I want to create uh, another property, and in this case, I want to make it a calculated property so that when I look at any of the concept in my taxonomy, I see the number of children. I want to place it in, the, in this labels and definition section. I'm going to call it, it's also going to be an attribute since it's going to be a, a number. I'm going to call it number of children. And um, that's all I want to say at this point. Okay. 
and I will define a rule for it. So clicking on clicking on a property, I could go to the modifier menu and create property value rule from template. Property value rules are for fields that are automatically inferred or calculated. And I have a few templates available to me. I'm going to use count number of inverse property values. The relationship between ch children and parents is scars broader and it's going from a child to a parent. So at the parent, I'm going to look at the inverse values for scars broader. And I'm going to pick broader concept. And that's going to be my role. So if I want to take a look at the rule, this is what it's going to do. It's going to take the incoming relationship. It's going to do the count and it's going to display the values. That concludes my customization work. And I'm going to go now into my taxonomy and take a look at the results. So application taxonomy. The first thing that I will need to do is to make the new ontology available to my taxonomy. And just like we did with including SCAS, this is the same process. I'm going to include now in the taxonomy my locations ontology. If I want all taxonomies in, in, to include uh, this specific ontology, I could set it up at the edge system level so all taxonomies will have that inclusion or i could do it one by one which which i did now so now when i go to um, add new concepts for example let me create a narrow concept i have an option instead of just creating a concept and that was the only option available to me i could do something more specific i could create a city So now I have created a city and I could start taking advantage of the new fields that I have put in place. So let's create a new state, South Carolina, for example. And it's going to be a state. So you see how the number of children gets calculated for it. And you also see that I have an option to create a capital and I have an option to enter the population. However, when I was looking at New York, I didn't have that option because New York is not a state and it's not a location concept. It's just a concept. So in order to take advantage of those fields that I have created, and the, the types uh, in classes that I have created, I now have to update my existing concepts to change their type. And I could do that using a bulk edit operation that is available to me under the concept uh, search. For example, I could take you know, the cities that I previously created, New York City and White Plains, and I could select them and edit them both of them together and what i want to edit for them is their type and i'm going to change them from a concept to a city all right and that's going to be the change i'm going to submit that so the batch edit is complete. I will do the same for, 
for the states, so New York, New Jersey, California, and North Carolina, the states that I created previously, I'm going to update them as well. Again, do the type and change it to city. So this will be my change of submit. I've done this successfully. Now, when I'm looking at New York, I see the number of children it has because it is now a state. And I also see that I have a population property available to it. Actually, I've changed it to city. I didn't want it to do that. I wanted to change it to state. So I just undid the change and I'm going to do it again. That's a good demonstration of the, pop, of the utility of undo as I make various mistakes here. So edit assets again and do the type next and we can change it to state this time. Sorry about that. All right, this is good. So now that I look at New York, it is a state, and I see not just population property available to me, but also the capital. And the capital of New York, of course, is Albany. And uh, luckily, I have created Albany before, so I could select. My selection is just from cities and I could uh, save changes. Could also enter a population as well. I don't remember exactly the number of people in New York, but it's someplace close to 20 million people, I think, maybe 10 million people, or more like 20. So let me do this. And this is a numeric number. This is, this is an integer, so it's a numeric value. You don't see me doing that, but I'm actually trying to now type letters and you see no letters appearing because Tabra uh, Edge protects me from entering incorrect values. I'm going to save changes and switch back to my to my video. All right. Um, could now update United States. Um, so it is a country. Changes. And you see number of children calculation is, is appearing. And the population field should appear as well, as well as, uh, as, well as the capital. So this is an uh, overview of how you could uh, customize the taxonomies by extending SCAS in your own ontology, adding additional classes, adding uh, properties, uh, defining calculated properties, and performing uh, a number of other operations in, uh, in terms of ontology editing. I invite you to take a look at our user, graph, uh, user guides where you could see more information on working with ontologies, the capabilities around ontologies are quite rich. Um, and you could uh, do a number of other extensions that I have not demonstrated here. Thank you for watching the video.